Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Both flying solo after the Cats take down the Shocker. 69-60 to in Kansas City. K-State, third straight win since this series got restarted. And uh, believe it or not, this was the largest margin of victory in any of these games. They have not been pretty when K-State and Wichita State have played each other on the basketball court over the last three years. Really all that matters, though, for K-State is they get a win heading into their extended 12-day break before they play again. Uh, they'll be back January 2nd against Chicago State in Manhattan. So you kind of get the nasty taste of the Nebraska game out of your mouth. But look, I don't think this game by any means uh, puts any of the, the worries and concerns about K-State moving forward as they get ready for Big 12 play away, but it at least – pushes the bad feelings to the side a little bit, and you can hide them and not think about them so much. And there were moments and stretches of this game where you can find positives and say, okay, that was better. This team has made a stride here. This team has done a couple of things here and there. So while I don't think that it was the most encouraging or impressive game from K-State, um, they certainly did not play a good game. I, I, I wouldn't give them that much. They probably played a good 13, 14 minutes in the second half. Uh, and I think Jerome Tang has, has talked about that at various points this year too, uh, where this team, you know, they they pick stretches where they play really well, but the totality of the game still isn't a good game by any means. And I think that this team tonight, kind of a similar deal. And like Paul Mills said after the game, that it was more about Wichita State than it was K-State. He is right about that, but, and not in the way that he thinks he is. Wichita State is a terrible basketball team. Like, that's pretty apparent based on how they played tonight and some of their other outcomes this season. K-State got away with playing a, a not-so-good game, a below-average game. At least you hope that tonight was a below-average game for K-State uh, because if it's not, then this team really isn't that good. So I'm going to say below average to still give them the leeway to say that I think they can be a good team. But you were fortunate you were playing an opponent like Wichita State, but you did have guys step up and ultimately come through. Maybe the biggest guy that stepped up tonight because he gave you more than what you're accustomed to is David Gasson. David Gasson went out for K-State. He was able to put up 13 points. He was efficient from the floor. He actually made more free throws than he missed tonight. He was three of five at the line, grabbed nine boards, swatted three shots. It was a really good night for David Gasson. There were still moments that were frustrating as heck with David Gasson, as there have always been throughout his now you know one-year-plus career at K-State. But tonight was a step in the right direction, and if he can finish more consistently at the rim because he is starting to get some more open looks, guys are giving him that opportunity, then that is going to be a big deal for K-State because there were a lot of times tonight where guys missed shots near the basket and they were given the opportunity. And those guys have to hit those because this is already a K-State team that has the ability and the propensity to overpass and it gets them into a lot of trouble at times. We saw that in tonight's game multiple times. The overpassing was really bad. Uh, and then another thing with this offense that kind of jumped out as being a struggle point is there's a lot of movement and chaotic nature to this offense, but it all happens without a purpose. Like so many possessions, guys are moving around, they're taking their dribbles, they're going here and there, but they're not doing it with a purpose. They're not going here to try and get a shot. They're not going here to try and find a guy open. They are just moving to move because they think that's what they need to do. Now, to some extent, you do. You don't want to get a five-second call for just standing there. But this is something that I think K-State still needs to improve upon is this offense has to find a purpose when they are moving the basketball. And this kind of ties into what our, our own Drew Galloway wrote about after the game and his instant takeaways is, like, this team's still trying to find an identity offensively and defensively. Offensively, they need to find an identity that way they aren't doing some of these things like overpassing and being, you know, moving without a purpose. Like that is all very important to get figured out. And I think they did a better job of that in the second half against Wichita State. Didn't seem like it was as prevalent of a, uh, of, of a problem there. So that is a step in the right direction. Early on in this game for K-State, it was a lot of back and forth and defensively, was not a good night for K-State. 
they let Wichita State get about anything they wanted by getting the basket and scoring. And Wichita State fans were complaining and bitching and moaning left and right on Twitter about, oh, the foul count. I had a, I had a buddy text me about, oh, these refs, the fouls. Look, K-State went to the free throw line because Wichita State was at least trying to provide some resistance in the paint. When K-State got there, Wichita State was fouling. Go earn it at the line. K-State was just like, hey, yeah, guard, come here and just you know put it up at the rim, go and finish. Uh, Wichita State beat K-State pretty handily in the points in the paint department tonight, 38-26. to 26. That's where your disparity in free throws comes from. Uh, so don't let any of the Wichita State fans try and bully you and try to say that officiating uh, was favorable to K-State tonight. It certainly wasn't because the second half officiating was not favorable to K-State. It evened out. The officiating was bad top to bottom, as it is most nights, because that's just what officiating basketball is like these days. But it was not favorable to one side or the other. So do not take that bogus argument and comment from the Wichita Staters in your life. Um, so that was a negative. Defensively, did not like what I saw from K-State. And again, this goes into one of my concerns that I've had most of the season. I think this team struggles to identify what they're seeing on the basketball floor. I think that they lack some of the basketball intelligence and just kind of that the feeling and the the sense that you have to have on the floor of okay play is moving like this here's where I need to be oh that guy just went over there this is where I need to fill in I need to make my movement look like this they are slow to react sometimes and there are also moments where they just look completely lost and it led to either easy buckets at the rim for Wichita State tonight or on an inbound play where Colby Rogers was just wide open in the corner for three. This team has to get smarter and has to get their basketball knowledge up more. This, this is a team that you have 12 days off right here. You should watch basketball every single day of this layoff in between playing games. You have to get smarter if you're going to become a team that can you know, be middle of the pack in the Big 12 at least to give yourselves an opportunity to be in the NCAA tournament this year, which again, this that should be the goal for this K-State team. The collection of talent, even though they have struggled, you have Jerome Tang as your head coach, you have expectations now that have come on you. This doesn't need to be an Elite Eight team, but this team should be good enough to make the NCAA tournament. They need to put themselves in a position where they can actually go out and give themselves a resume to get to the tournament. Um, and, and so that's why I'm I'm so intense on some of that stuff. Uh, before I get into some of the positives, one other thing just to put on the radar of people, and I think most of you watching this already know this, watching or listening, however you're taking it in. K-State in late clock situations this year has been really bad. The way that they have managed time and then run the offense off of that time has not been very good. I think they went into to kill clock mode uh, a little too early tonight. But the biggest issue is too many times there either is a lack of awareness of how much time is on the shot clock or when a game is winding down, how much time is left, and they just get stuck with terrible possessions. Exactly what happened at the end of the first half, there were other moments in the game where the clock gets down, and you're like, okay, you do realize that like in order to make something happen here, it would probably be wise to initiate the offense with more than seven seconds left, especially because, like I said earlier, this team – overpasses and they struggle to get themselves in a position to move with a purpose. So you have those things already. Limited time is not a, a good thing for this team. This team, the way they're playing currently offensively, they need that ample time. So that's something to monitor moving forward. Positives. I already mentioned David Gasson came out, give K-State a lot of good tonight. Tyler Perry, there were moments, there were flashes there. And look, you're going to look at it and say, man, he missed a lot of shots again. Yes, he did. He was 4 of 13 from the field and 3 of 11 from 3. Made all of his free throws, though. Finishes with the game-high 17 points. And again, the looks are starting to appear a little bit better for Tyler Perry. And I know Jerome Tang made the comment about best shooter in America, all that. So people are holding it against Tyler Perry because he keeps missing shots left and right. He's just got to keep taking them. Like K-State needs him to make shots, and the worst thing that could happen is for him to shy away and not go out there and, and shoot the basketball. Now, he has to be smart about what shots he's taking, but I thought he was better about that tonight. He got some better, more free looks. They just didn't fall yet. Honestly, 
this is probably a little bit of hyperbole, but I would not hate if the game plan for K-State was get Tyler Perry 20 shots from deep in the game against Chicago State, work tirelessly to get him going, because once those shots start falling for Tyler Perry, even just a little bit more than they are right now, we are going to talk about this K-State team in a much different way. Because Jerome Tang, look, I, I don't buy the, hey, shots didn't fall, that's why we lost to Nebraska. I mean, yes, shots did not go in the basket. That is why you lose basketball games and why you lost to Nebraska. But you weren't taking good shots against Nebraska most of the time. There were a lot of bad shots that were taken in that game. You take bad shots more times than not, you're going to miss them. But tonight, that was not the case. I, I There were very few times where I thought, oh, that's a bad shot. I think Tyler Perry needs to get more of these opportunities, more of these looks, and shots will eventually fall for him because there is nothing in his background to suggest that how he is shooting it right now is how he will shoot it the entirety of the season or you know, reflective of the shooter that he is. So I would say keep shooting it more, keep getting those looks, see if you can finally get something going, get some things to fall, and uh, see what happens. Honestly, like I, I said it early in the game to a couple of guys, I would like to see Tyler Perry take more of those step back threes in game as opposed to just late in the game because I think, it, again, there's less thinking involved. He obviously has uh, the power to do it, and he's been good at it late in games. I think it's just a weapon that he needs to try and utilize more. So uh, I think we saw a step in the right direction for Tyler Perry, despite the fact that shots didn't fall tonight. K-State absolutely needs him to step up uh, to, to be good down the stretch. Now, elsewhere, uh, there were moments tonight where I still think the rebounding is a struggle for K-State. Uh, I know that a lot of people were kind of wondering, well, where's Jarrell Colbert? Look, Jarrell Colbert's not going to help K-State's rebounding situation. Jarrell Colbert might be the tallest guy on the team. He, I think, is the worst rebounding big man on the team. He is one of the biggest culprits of the just tap it out, tap it out, tap it out. Look, you're not playing volleyball. You're playing basketball. Grab it. There are times where the tap out on a rebound 100% makes sense. I think K-State's a little too tap out heavy on the rebounding. I think that's part of the problem. And again, it just goes down to an effort thing. I They were better on it tonight, but this is still a team that has moments where it just feels like they're going through the motions and they're not giving it as much of an aggressive effort as they should. So that is another thing to monitor. Um, but Jarrell Colbert probably wouldn't have helped K-State tonight uh, because really you need a guy that's going to go in there and rebound for you to help things out. And it's just not the, can the case. And K-State got beat second chance points tonight, 15 to nine, despite the fact that they out rebounded in Wichita State and that they had the same amount of offensive rebounds at 13. So K-State's just got to be better. And it proves that it's important, important for K-State to get those rebounds uh, defensively and avoid offensive rebounds for the opponent because it, if they are getting him, Wichita State was scoring on them tonight. So that's a significant deal to consider moving forward. All right. Well, that's uh, enough on that. Look. This is a good win for K-State because you got the win. I said it this way, great outcome, not a great performance, but you got the job done. There are positives to take away, good signs moving forward, and you know you, you get this long layoff, you go out, you blast around Chicago State, and then it's Big 12 time. And the schedule, you can ease into it a little bit. UCF at home is a nice way to start give this team an opportunity. We're all going to forget about the negatives and we're going to just focus back on this team and try and buy in. They are nine and three. I think that there is a, you know, a real path here for this team to still be a good team. They just haven't shown it all the way yet. They've got to prove it. And they've got a couple of games to uh, work themselves up there before they get really tested uh, into the, the deeper stretches of big 12 play. Uh, personally for me, Thank goodness K-State beat Wichita State. As everybody knows, I do not like the Shockers at all. So uh, never gets old getting to see my alma mater take down Wichita State. Very big point of pr pride for me. So uh, I am excited to see that. And I'm very glad that K-State, for the third consecutive year, is able to put Wichita State in their place, let them know that they are third in this state, I don't know, maybe, they, maybe they're lower, maybe Fort Hayes State. We know that Fort Hayes State can always be a dangerous team. Uh, maybe they're better than Wichita State. Who knows? Uh, Wichita State will probably schedule them now because that's what they like to do, get friends on the schedule, shockers. So, yeah, good times. I enjoyed watching K-State beat Wichita State, even if the way to get there, the road was kind of maddening. K-State did it. 
there are positives to take forward. And after you know Sunday's post game show, I was not very pleased with how K State played. I didn't see many positives to take forward, and I think that a negative thought process was the only way to go. I think too many times there is just endless positivity that's given towards this K-State basketball program right now. When you play like crap and when things are going bad, you deserve to be called out for the negative play. Like you, There shouldn't be just endless bounds of, of positivity. Like Negativity should be there. Use it in a good way, though. And I think K-State came out. They played better. They're getting into a better spot now. And I will end this on a positive note that I think this thing is kind of swung back. They did a nice job of bouncing back from losing to Nebraska in a bad, bad way. And look, we'll see how the the rest of the season plays out and certainly how they bounce back to a lesser extent against Chicago State. But in, you know, what, two weeks now uh, when they are going to go ahead and take on uh, UCF to start Big 12 play. So as you can tell, I've been taking care of a four-month-old baby all day working. Now I'm tired. It's time to go to bed. Cats take down Wichita State. Hope they have a glorious bus ride back to Wichita with lots of traffic and just potholes and whatever else they need to make their life a lot crappier. But they have to go back to 21st and Hillside as their residence. So uh, life already sucks enough for them, and I'm glad K-State could give them a 69-60 to loss. So for K-State Online, I'm Mason Voth. We'll see you next time. Be staying tuned to the YouTube channel for K-State Online because we've got a couple of good holiday pieces of content coming your way. Look, we're not going to have like timely shows or anything, but a couple things banked up for you to have some fun over the holidays to hold you over until the 26th. That will be our next actual show. We are going to do our Pop-Tarts Bowl preview, so stay locked into that. Head over to on Three to check out kstateonline.com, all the great written coverage from D.Y. and Drew. Maybe me if they need to tap me in, but you know that's not my forte. I'll let the, uh, the Masters handle that. They've got you covered with all the great football and basketball info over there. So that'll do it for me. Thank you for watching and listening to K-State Online.